Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me Swastika and in this video I'll be discussing with you all the three different reasons as to why some people manage to clear difficult competitive examinations in a single attempt whereas other students take more time. What is the point of differentiation and what are the three things that you can possibly do or what are the three reasons that you can look into and improve yourselves so you can take shorter duration to clear difficult competitive papers like UGC net, like entrances to your top colleges, like your GREs, like your civil services examination for entry into diplomatic services in India or in UN. So without any further ado, let's get to it. The first reason is that a lot of people when they sit down and look at the syllabus which is generally a lot for these difficult competitive examinations like to take this work as worship. So this basically means that they enjoy doing the work. They enjoy coming back home, sitting every day for 8 to 10 hours just studying for their competitive entrances. So if you start enjoying the work so much it becomes a problem because then you start chasing this image of perfection of you know wanting to be perfect it's like a mirage in a desert for those of you who don't know what a mirage means it means that in a desert there is completely barren land and a person is really craving for water so the person starts seeing these wells at a horizon at a certain distance and as soon as he you know approaches that uh, space it seems like that well or that water body is even further away. So this is this mirage of perfection that these students, that these professionals start to chase and this causes a wastage of time because that perfection that you are aiming for is just never going to happen. So sometimes it's just better to let things be, to let them be as they are in their own space and with their own time so yes it's nice that you enjoy your work but that doesn't mean that you start drifting away from the syllabus of what is being asked in your examination for example if the question or if the examinee is trying to ask me implications of drought in uh, areas i want to stick to that point i don't want to you know adrift and change my focus again and again so this is the first point that i wanted to discuss before moving on to the second point i have an interesting offer for you all my instagram page which is lurks bags india it's going to get short somewhere here you guys can follow it um i'm selling amazing quality branded and non-branded bags for all of the all of my viewers who are interested in purchasing you can dm me on instagram um like i have I'm operating by two IDs. My first one is it's Swastika Sharma. It's going to get displayed here. My second bag ID where I'm selling those bags for you guys. And of course, the fact that I'm selling these bags to my subscribers means that they're of amazing quality. They're really, really good. They're sturdy. And they come in all different brands. Like you can buy your Gucci, you can buy your Prada, you can buy a Burberry, even Louis Vuitton from me. So just check out my shop. Um, it's amazing quality. I wouldn't sell anything that's substandard to my subscribers. I also sell, there are some non-branded things as well. If you guys are into it, you can just pick and choose whatever you want to. I've displayed my Instagram ID here. You can also email me at swastikasharmawork at the rate of gmail.com. In case I'm unable to reply on my DMs because they uh, get too full and there's all, almost always too many people asking me a lot of questions. So you can send a personal email and you can also enroll into my counseling. If you're a student and you don't know what you're doing with your career, you don't know what you're doing with, with yourself and you need like, you know, a dose of motivation or a career plan to guide you in the right direction, you can just email me at swastikasharmawork at the rate of gmail.com and I will instantly look into all your queries, into all your doubts and into all your questions. So without any further ado, type that email, buy my stuff and because of course it's all for you guys uh, for being patient 
with me in my journey for being um, an amazing source of support uh, and the prices are also not extremely high uh, in case you want to have a proper counseling session that is not going to be free that's going to be paid so please keep that in mind before you type your email so guys let's move forward to the second point of you know figuring out why some people take shorter duration to clear a competitive paper and why some people take longer duration and what are the takeaways so the second thing is that you need to start disrespecting your work okay this means that there are two things the first thing is time and the second thing is work the day you understand these concepts better is the day that things will become easier for you is the day that things will automatically start smoothing out for you so the first thing that is is to start disrespecting your work but to start respecting your time so this basically means that you need to have a priority management so if i have decided that from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock i'm going to shoot a youtube video edit it and put it forward for you guys and if i'm able to do that within 2 hours then it means that my work is done my time is respected okay however if i sit for 2 hours and i'm not able to uh do this or for example i set one hour aside for reading the newspaper and somebody asks me a question from that and i come to the realization that yes you know this this book was right in front of me this newspaper was right in front of me for 2 hours but i can't even recall or retrieve two simple words two simple sentences from this then the problem becomes me then it means that i am completely disrespecting my time and that is an issue because the more you disrespect your time the more difficult it gets for you to work so it's okay to disrespect your work it's okay to say that you know i just don't want to do 25 things today i want to stick to doing just eight but it's important to do those eight things well and in a manner in a fashion in which you are respecting your own time so a lot of the reason reason some people fail some people make quick gains and others don't is because some people respect their time while others do not so this is the first, this is the second thing in which it's very important for us to set priorities for us to manage those priorities for us to have a laser sharp focus and for us to also start disrespecting our time uh, our work sorry okay so the third thing and the third tip here is going to be that you have to start building focus every time you're giving a competitive paper uh the questions there are four steps to you know studying well for it and to getting good marks and to you know reaching your uh reaching your destination well in time and with a good rank the first step is to just study so if you don't know something about the topic you need to first take a print out of the syllabus you need to start studying okay and once you're done studying it you have to focus on memorization on having repeated revisions now these first two steps are something that every student across this country across this world does everyone who's preparing for gre is going to read kaplan books is going to read 20 other books every person who's preparing for upsc is going to read spectrum is going to read lakshmikant but and they're also going to revise it but yet some people make it and others don't because the people who don't make it just follow these two steps and they think like students so this is a problem you need to stop thinking like a student and start thinking like an examinee so this means that after studying a topic after revising it you need to focus on two additional steps that are going to make you a winner that are going to make you clear your paper faster the third step is going to be retrieval so you have a 30 minutes study plan the first thing i recommend to all students is that please don't study for 10 hours please don't study for 8 hours don't even study for 6 hours study for 4 and a half 
five hours at the maximum and in those five hours or in those four hours or three and a half hours if you can focus take breaks after every 30 minutes but in those 30 minutes figure out something that you want to learn till the end of that examination so focus on studying focus on memorization but also focus on retrieving that information. You can sit down with your parents if you, you know, stay in the house with them and you can tell them the entire story of what you are reading to your parents or to your brother or on a YouTube channel just to make sure that you are in a position to retrieve the information that you've read throughout the day. So it doesn't matter if you study 10 hours, but you're only in a position to retrieve information worth one hour. And the second thing that's important is to take breaks after 30 minutes, like your one study session shouldn't be for three hours straight. That's that's difficult. Go easy on yourselves and try to retrieve. So this is basically the th this is basically the third step in which I tell my students to not think like a student, but to think like an examinee. So you have to ask yourself the first question that what is this examination? What is this paper asking me? Is this examination asking me the entire life story of Mahatma Gandhi, how he went to Champaran? Because Mahatma Gandhi was a failed lawyer in India, but he went to South Africa and he failed in all his missions there. Then in 1917, when he came back to India, there was this Champaran Satyagraha. That was probably the only movement that Mahatma Gandhi led that he was successful in, the Champaran Satyagraha in 1917. So you can tell this entire story if you want to, or you can just focus on the important things on the important aspects of what the examinee is trying to ask you okay so this is another this is the third thing which says that it's important to not just focus on studying and memorization but it's also extremely important to focus on being able to retrieve the information that you've studied that you've memorized the last and the fourth thing that all students keep in mind and should keep in mind and a lot of them don't even know it, is the word skilling. How to skill your answers better. So this means that, for example, I'm in a subjective examination and I have to learn some facts. So the facts that I have to learn have to be layered. So this means that if I'm studying something on literacy in India, the first thing that probably everyone reads is that, you know, the male literacy is pegged at around 83% to 85% and the female literacy is comparatively low at 65%. However, if I mention this data in my examination, it's not going to generate a shockwave with the person who's checking the paper, the person who is the examinee. So how to generate this shockwave? The answer is simple, guys. You don't have to learn these basic facts. These are all layer A facts. The fact that, you know, you're remembering the, the literacy gap uh, between uh, men and women is just, you know, layer A. Layer B would probably be that, you know, in 75 years, it's Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. We've completed 75 years of independence. Kudos to our country for achieving freedom from a colonial, uh, you know, rule. Uh, we're yet not free from a colonial mindset, but yes, kudos to us. So we have in 75 years reached 75% of average literacy. This might be a layer B fact because we are interlinking two different concepts, which is independence with literacy. Layer C and layer D fact would probably be something like if you are in a position to understand uh, the difference in the rural literacy and the urban literacy rates and the gender gap that prevails with these two. If you're in a position to remember this data and reproduce this information in your examination, in your subjective paper, trust me, the examinee is going to be impressed and you are going to score extremely, extremely good marks. So the focus is going to be on skilling. Skilling means that you're not looking for facts that are very superficial. That is something that everyone knows around you. You're looking for facts that are layer D, that have layers, are more complex and are in a position to generate shock waves with the examination. So this is how you score your extra marks, your extra... Uh, this is how you get an X factor. This is how you build that X factor. So this is the fourth part which focuses on skilling, which focuses on building a laser sharp focus in your answer writing. If you're 
you know, studying, <clears throat> it's important to focus and to study and to not just sit in front of a book and get bored for two, three hours. So guys, these were my three points. I hope they were useful. I hope this session um, of 15 or so minutes was useful for you. This is some of the data, data that I could compile for you. These were some of the three things that, uh, you know, made me distinguish between, you know, people who clear papers quickly, who are more successful and people who just take slightly longer. But there's nothing wrong in taking more time if you are up for it. You know, it's 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 how the Hindi proverbial uh, saying goes: "Apna time aega, sabka time aega." And best of luck to all the people on my channel who are giving competitive papers. I get to hear success stories often. I'm very and extremely sorry if I can't reply to all your emails. To all, actually, I reply to all my emails because they're fewer and numbered. But it becomes difficult for me to look at my Instagram DMs and reply to everyone. So again, do follow me on Instagram. My name is It's Swastika Sharma. You can follow my luxury bag page where I basically post stuff that you guys can buy, which is, you know, reasonably priced. And it's of very good quality because I want my subscribers to have the best of everything. And I hope this, this session was useful for you. So if I had to sum up everything in, you know, three sentences or in three words, I would say the first important thing is to, you know, not be perfect. It's okay to be imperfect. That's the first thing. The second thing is to disrespect your work, but to respect your time. And the third thing is to focus on not just your uh, ability to memorize and study, but to also focus on retrieval and skilling. So these are the three points, the three points of differences between achievers and between people who take slightly longer to achieve the same goal. So thank you guys for staying up with me, for staying tuned. And I hope this session was useful. If it was useful, then you should definitely press the red button, which is subscribe. You should like this video. You can comment your views. You can tell me what I have to make in my next video. And I'll definitely get back to you people with more content, with more data, which is going to be useful, which is going to help you be more successful. So thank you for staying tuned. Do subscribe, do like, do tell your friends about my channel and have fun. Have a good day.